And so we went to the we went down to the basics of biomechanics, shoe ingredients, shoe construction, and 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 foot foot anatomy and morphology. And we said, you know, how are we going to dress all of these things in a, in an output that will hit the mark for most everybody? What's going on, guys? Welcome to the new training shoe series that I want to start that dives deeper into shoes and more specifically into the culture and creation of the training shoes that we use every day that I think at times we could take for granted. I think as consumers, when we look at training shoes, there are so many models out there, we don't sometimes appreciate the intricate details that go in to various models. So as a trainer and a coach, when I see a program in front of me, for example, I would rather know the rationale and the why that went into that program versus just what's kind of right in front of me. I want to be in the mind of the person who is physically creating that thing. So in this first episode, we're going to be talking with Paul Litchfield from GoBruck. He is a shoe dog of more than 30 years. He has worked at Reebok, Puma, and now GoRuck, and he is the guy and the driver behind the GoRuck Ballistic Trainers. I wanted to know why did he make this shoe the way he did? And what brought this shoe to fruition? In creating the ballistic trainer, we took a, a this the same path uh, that we took to create the Mac B1. Um, with, any, with any product, Jake, uh, when, when you're making it, to your point, um, the process is humbling. It really is because uh, the, the 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 product is going to tell you um, exactly where it's at, and the product is going to tell you exactly uh, what kind of value it provides to the athlete, right? And, um, and you can, you can think you're wicked smart, right? You'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I, this is what it's supposed to be. But many, many, many times, uh, your, your best ideas and your best concepts, uh, either go by the wayside or they change dramatically because, um, the product behaves differently than what you expected from, you know, when, when, when an athlete is putting them, putting them through its paces. So on the ballistic trainer, what we did was, uh, we had our Mac V1 boot. Uh, it is a it sets an industry standard in this lightweight performance boot category, and and it does um, fortunately uh, exactly what it is advertised to do, and and I'm super proud of that. But it is the event and and the boot portion of of Go Ruck is a big business, but there's also what we have uh, called SRT, which is sandbag ruck training, and the the, the boots are. Are, are very viable for that platform. But there are certain aspects um, as you go from kind of events to kind of real kind of more standard functional fitness activities, maybe in a gym or something where um, you need some different ingredients to, 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 to make the product. And and I had, um, I'd spent a long time, many years um, working on performance product for Reebok. Uh, I was actually, um, Involved in the in the first conversation, I was involved in the first conversations about the product when Reebok got involved with CrossFit, um, and, and and all that. And there were certain approaches to that functional fitness CrossFit um, community at the time, and functionally people took it to a, a direction that I I wasn't I wasn't comfortable with, super candidly. Um, it was that was during the time of the Vibram five finger shoes. That was the time of kind of minimal shoes and flat shoes, and and, and for some really kind of indirect reasons, the Innovates out of Scotland um, were were a big CrossFit shoe. It's that's a different kind of construction. It's a different kind of piece of footwear. No harm, no foul. It just it just wasn't where, where I thought the shoe should the shoe should go for a performance reason. And based on my previous experience as a younger guy doing powerlifting and Olympic lifting um, training as well as competitions, there was an opportunity for us to build a shoe that was more focused on the basic biomechanical attributes that are encountered in explosive workouts when you are trying to dynamically load the body with, with weight. So after getting their start in a lot of different product categories, GORUCK eventually landed on creating the ballistic trainers. What was the anatomy that went into them? What was the thought process into building them the way they did? Was it spurred from their boots and their success in that realm? Was it spurred from what Paul had experienced at Reebok and where the industry was headed? The anatomy is what I wanted to know next. The short answer is it took a long time. And 
And the reason why it took a long time, one of the things that I was more comfortable with, to be honest with you, was the um, the recipe of the EVA, the ingredients, getting the durometers right and all that, because that's chemistry is kind of my background, you know. And, and, and so uh, I had I, I'm I'm a little more comfortable in that environment, which is which is different than most shoe people, I guess. Uh, and, and so uh, and where I'm out of my depth, I got some really, really technically savvy friends who can help refine that stuff for me. So if the the dual density, the 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 essentially the the compression and then the and then the rebound of an EVA or a midsole material, um, you can do some pretty trick things with the recipes. And I knew that we wanted a heel that that had some responsiveness. wasn't wasn't a full you know kind of like a block of rubber, but but we wanted it to be uh, something that that was that had stability not only up and down but side to side. Right. So, so, you know, the, the, the platform itself needed to have a certain width platform itself had it needed to have a certain kind of like a um, horizontal plane that was dependable. Uh, and then um, going into the forefoot where there's more, more rebound characteristics, that's just based on, on how the body works. You know, when you jump, you don't jump off your heels, you jump off your toes and you, and you need, and you need a, a product that's going to um, kind of work in, in conjunction with those dynamics. So one of the aspects that stood out to me with the ballistic trainers is their higher heel to toe drop. Sitting at eight millimeters, that is very different than the cross training shoe norm, which is four millimeters that most just kind of accept and use without much thought into it. I have talked about heel to toe drop in detail. I'm gonna link that video up there if you wanna learn more. But that being said, why did GORUCK go with eight millimeters? What was the rationale behind that? Ultimately doing the heel lift, the eight, we did an eight millimeter heel. But it's funny because um, inside of GORUCK, uh, people were like, nope, nope. You know, and because we got a lot of great CrossFitters, we got a lot of um, special operations um, veterans who have, you know, worked out for years in CrossFit activities. And, and, and they're like, look at we, you know, zero or four millimeters maximum. So we made a bunch of different midsoles. I made I made zero, four, and eight millimeter midsoles, and um, and we we sent them out to folks inside of our bubble, uh, and and we and and I didn't tell them what they had. They just tested shoes after shoes after shoes, and um, those tests uh, were pretty informative to us. And 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 ultimately, people would say uh, almost to the person, like you know with the eight millimeter, uh, they, they either like them a lot, like full stop, like them a lot, or they like them and like, yeah, these are good, but you know what? I actually was wearing these after the workout, like and all day long. And I, I really liked them then. So to, to me, I, I, I knew that we were onto something because, um, while the ballistic trainers need to have the specificity of being, uh, being biomechanically correct, uh, the notion that you can't wear them around because your feet hurt at the end of the day, it just doesn't fly with me. It just, it, that's not, that means you're missing something. And the eight millimeter heel lift coupled with the geometry of the, of the heel width and the, and the heel shape um, and the, uh, the compound itself provides that, that little bit of biomechanical advantage so that when you're pulling off the ground in, a, in, a, in an explosive lift and you drop underneath the weight, but you want that center of gravity uh, basically going from your from your chest right down through through your mid thigh um, and then you want it to land right in front of your ankles so like like if this is if you want it you want it just in front of your um, of your ankle and a little bit of a heel lift allows your ankle to dorsi to dorsi flex a little bit less so that you're more on the ground without needing to essentially um, have secondary muscle activity to try to balance. So one of the mini topics that Paul and I really geeked out on was how a training shoe's construction can change biomechanics in your training sessions. Now I have talked on weightlifting shoe heel elevation before with biomechanical changes. I'm gonna link that video up there. But what I was most interested in was, hey, you guys have an eight millimeter heel toe drop. How did you navigate the resistance from folks who are used to four millimeters, are used to a slightly flatter shoe? How did you accommodate for those folks who might not be keen to using eight millimeters right off the bat and changing how their training shoe fits and feels? 
The other thing, the other, the other real critical aspect to the footwear is our insole uh, or our sock liner. Uh, and, and that, that comes from uh, a long, a long history from me on building this sock liner that essentially captured these captures the topography or the geometry underneath your foot. And it's not just the medial arch, you know, your arch cookie, but it's also your long arch, your longitudinal arch. And, uh, on your lateral side, it's also your transverse arch. So our sock liner is shaped like that. Now. What I found was that for people who like that flatter feel, while also providing them that eight millimeter heel lift, what we decided to do, and again, this is where I give Go Rock and Jason a lot of credit, because we put a lot of money into that inner sole, which is which most shoe, most shoe companies don't. But at the same time, we recognize that some of our testers thought that was too much, so we also included in inside the ballistic trainer a pair of five millimeter flat inner sole. And that provides that, that, that tactile feel to those who like flat, that flat feel. It provides them that tactile feel of something they're used to and normal to. So you can take our, you can take our contoured um, three, three, uh, three arch support sock liner out if you so desire. And you can put in this flat five millimeter one um, that is actually the materials we use are better than most you get in typical shoes because we want to not only make something that's good but also recognize that you know there's a lot of a lot of people out there with a lot of different flavors of, of feel and and we want to we want to respect them and give them the opportunity to try these shoes in a way that is um i think when, when they get done they're like shit that's pretty good so after talking on the heel to toe drop in the ballistic trainers and how they accommodated for the individual needs and demands of a variety of lifters, I did want to know more about the upper construction. Why did they use ballistic nylon? Because I do think that is very go ruck proprietary nature when it comes to just the overall toughness of the material of this shoe. But why did they use that and what was the rationale? Well, the upper construction absolutely did. And again, what we wanted to do was to use the best materials we could for the right reasons. So the forefoot and the vamp area has got that engineered knit and the engineered knit allows for strength and, and support uh, right around the feather edge and right around your toes. But it also uh, allows for breathability and, uh, and, and flexibility up on the top or above your, above your toes. So it's very flexible. But then as you transition behind your metatarsal heads into the midfoot area, um, we, we had two things we wanted to do. The first thing was we wanted to make uh, the, the, the shoe durable enough for any rope climbs and, and things like that. So um, we, made, we, we chose ballistic, the, the ballistic nylon, but we also made it out of one piece from, from right, right around the heel counter on because what that allowed us to do is uh, with, the, with the 1680 denier ballistic nylon, which is a pretty, a very, very robust uh, type of ballistic nylon. It allowed us to um, create this cage, if you will, uh, from the heel counter to the midfoot area up to the laces. So when you tie this down, uh, that that whole thing helps to hold the, the, the heel of your foot over the midsole, uh, as well as help, helps to hold the midfoot so that you're not kind of moving around and you don't have extra splay, if you will. So the, 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 the ballistic nylon helps with that, but on rope climbing and whatnot, we wanted to make um, the shoe so that it will, it will hold up. Interestingly enough, what we also did on the outsole, Jake, was um, the outsole also has some pretty secret ingredients to it. Um, and what we did with the outsole uh, in the midfoot area, right where the spearhead is, uh, I actually worked with a, a, a buddy of mine, this, this friend of mine who's a just a rubber guru he, he does rubber chemistry and that is actually a rock climbing type of rubber it is super super hard and so uh yeah and, and and so that will and if you look at the arch the arts the arch is a little bit wider and the arch has got the rubber that comes up over the eva uh so that when you're doing a rope climb you'll hit the rubber and then you'll hit the ballistic nylon without tearing out your eva midsole um and, 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 and that rubber will not wear out. It just won't wear out. Now, you can't use that rubber in the heel because it's actually so hard uh, and, and so good for that kind of abrasion. It's almost too slippery. So we've got a heel material made of, uh, the, the rubber material in the heel is actually um, a higher abrasion, but it's also got some traction element to it. 
Uh, and in the forefoot, it's even got more traction. Um, to, so there's three different compounds on that one outsole. What, what, I, what I think is happening is that there's a refinement going on uh, inside the CrossFit community. And I, I think that the refinement is um, a, a lot more adherence to functionality. And, 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 the, and the functionality is such that, um, you know, there's, I learned a long time ago that um, comfort is not a soft word. You know, when it comes to your gear, I mean, because if your gear is comfortable, meaning it fits and it performs well, that allows you to physically and mentally get as uncomfortable as you want to be without having the distraction of having your gear failing. you, Right. So, so, so I, um, I, we intentionally made our shoes comfortable to the point where, you know, the biggest compliment and, and again, dude, you know, way more about biomechanics and science than most people. However, the fact that you like the shoes, even though the details were not obvious to you at first, to me, that's the greatest compliment you could, you could pay us because you know, that, 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 that look that people give you when a piece of gear footwear in this, in this case just works for them and they kind of lean in and they go, I got to tell you about this. This is how it is, you know, and, and, and they, and the shoes become like their favorite shoes. First, it's their Sunday go to meeting or, or their performance shoes. And then it, then it becomes their everyday shoe. Then it becomes their lawn mowing shoe or something like that. Right. You know, that's, that's kind of the biggest compliment going. And for us in on the product side, Jake, and our job is actually not to get people to buy the shoe the first time. That's Stevon, that's Jason, that's good. Our job on the product side, dude, is to get people to buy it the second time. So that means it's got to have its value. It's got to hold up to whatever expected value and exceed it uh, that whatever the customer has. One of the final topics we discussed was what it takes to really break into a very big and competitive cross training shoe scene. GORUCK has been on the market for quite some time, but when it comes to creating cross training shoes, they are relatively new. They are a small fish in a very big pond at this point. And being a smaller YouTube channel, I think that's why I really resonate with a brand that is trying to break into a brand new product category. I know what it's like to kick and fight and really establish yourself. So what is it like competing against people like Nike, Reebok, some of these bigger dogs that have been competitive in this scene forever? How do you navigate that and have the mental tenacity to do so? First of all, you know, if we if we have created something that is true uh, to the uh, to the intended output, um, then and and we and we are confident that we've addressed the needs defined by that product. Uh, you got to have the um, intestinal fortitude to stick with it, because there will be people uh, who will um, who will absolutely discount you and not even consider you. And they'll be like, yeah, but I already do this. It's like, okay, you know, and, 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 and the one thing I am really happy uh, to have, to be lucky enough to be working with GORUCK is that GORUCK is, and, and Jason and the team, uh, they're really, really clear about the fact that if we have made a product and we've met our standard, uh, we don't have to make any excuses. Uh, we, you know, you don't like it. You don't want to try it. That's up to you. But I am, I am super confident that these ballistic trainers are an absolute industry benchmark in the CrossFit community. I guarantee you that people are going to be looking at this shoe and they're going to be saying, you know, how did they do it? And dude, we went, there's a, there's a saying at, at Go Rock and it's, it's through the military. There's brilliance in the basics. And so we went to the, we went down to the basics of biomechanics, shoe ingredients, shoe construction and, and, and foot, foot anatomy and morphology. And we said, you know, how are we going to address all of these things in, a, in an output that will, will hit the mark for most everybody? And, and we did it. Now, um, for people who are like, you know, I, I, you know, I only wear Metcons, I only wear Nanos, I only wear Innovates. Huh? Cool. You know, try the, try the shoes. Uh, or if you're my family or if, you, or if you're in, in my circle, I'll give you a pair of shoes. But even throughout all of my days um, in, the, in the sporting goods industry, uh, Jake, I ne I've always given shoes to people in my family or so with the, with the 
stated caveat that try them. If they work, great. If they don't because you're a Saucony jazz runner or you're a Mizuno runner or you're this or that, then okay, don't use them. I mean, you know, it, it's like if, if, if you have found your holy grail, good on you. I, I got, you know, I'm not going to grind an ax with you on that. So, uh, but, but I would, I would offer that if you try these things, that these things are going to get your attention. And if you're willing to be open-minded, you might find that these things really work well. So everyone, that's the DNA and the story behind the GORUCK Ballistic Trainers. As this series progresses, I plan to do other training shoes and feature other folks from different companies. Like, talking to shoe dogs, it's unreal because it makes me realize how much I have yet to learn in this space. And it was easy to get like the energy from Paul when he was talking about the shoes. But guys, if you made it this far, you are a real one. Drop a comment down below and let me know if you like this video and what kind of shoe you'd like to see next in this series. And as always guys, drop a like to the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.